The quantum Hadamard transform is perhaps the most widely used building block in quantum computing, as it shows up in almost every quantum algorithm. Its definition is easy to understand with what we've learned so far, but there are a few notational aspects related to it worth introducing. So let's take a look. The quantum Hadamard transform, which we can write as a QHT of n qubits, is nothing other than just applying a Hadamard gate to each individual qubit that composes our system. So in a circuit diagram, all we will have is a Hadamard gate applied from qubit Q0 all the way to qubit n minus one. Now to construct the unitary matrix that represents the quantum Hadamard transform, all we will need to do is perform the Kronecker product of the individual matrices for each of the Hadamard gates. So for example, in the case of two qubits, what we have is one over root two, one, one, one minus one, Kronecker product with one over root two, one, one, one minus one. And if we perform that operation, what we see is that we get one over root two squared times the following matrix, which as we can see, always consists of a series of alternating one and minus one values. So in general, for n qubits, what we have is a matrix of the form one over root of capital N, where this N is two to the lowercase n, and this lowercase n is the total number of qubits, times a matrix with some coefficients that can be calculated with the following expression. So the coefficient h for the ith row and the jth column is given by minus one to the power of i dot product with j where the way we calculate this dot product is by taking the binary representation of i and j. So for example, if we're going to calculate this for the second row and the sixth column, well, the second row in binary will be zero, one, zero, and the sixth column in binary will be the number one, one, zero. To compute the dot product, we just take each individual bit, and multiply it. So we multiply zero times one plus one times one plus zero times zero, which is equal to one. So the coefficient for the quantum Hadamard transform matrix in the second row and the sixth column will be minus one to the power of one, which is minus one. And we can calculate any other coefficient just following this expression. Now, of course, doing this manually can be very tedious. So we can always go and use Qiskit to generate the Hadamard transform matrix for whatever number of qubits we want. So there are two simple ways to do that. So let's say we want to get the quantum Hadamard transform matrix for four qubits. So one way to do this is to use the operator class and then use the from label function where we specify that we want the operator for the Hadamard gate and we simply multiply it by the number of qubits we have. And then if we display that, you can see we get the matrix for the quantum Hadamard transfer for four qubits now, because the matrix is so large, in this case is a two to the four by two to the four matrix, we don't get to see every entry, but if we wanted to, we can use the draw method and specify LaTeX, and then we can pass max size equal to two to the N, and then that displays the complete matrix. Alternatively, we could create a quantum circuit with N qubits and then apply a Hadamard gate to each of the qubits and then we can find the quantum Hadamard transform matrix by using the operator class and passing that quantum circuit. And we should see the exact same matrix we see here. Now, part of the reason why the quantum Hadamard transform is of great importance is because when we apply it to the all zero state, it always results in having the plus state in each individual qubit, which if we perform the Kronecker product of all the individual elements, well, we know that each plus state is the state one over two zero plus one, which then results in an equal superposition of all the individual basis states. So we have the all zero state plus state one plus state two, all the way to the all ones state. And the reason this is critical is because what we want to do in almost every quantum algorithm is to apply this quantum Hadamard transform to the all zero state, which as we can see here above, 
will give us an equal superposition of all possible states and then pass it through some sort of function which then would get evaluated simultaneously for each of the basis states in our system. And this is where the massive parallelism of quantum computing comes from. And after that function is applied, what we typically do is apply the Halmar transform again to create either constructive or destructive interference of different terms after this function evaluation to give us a particular answer. And of course, we will cover all these details in future videos as we explore different quantum algorithms. But the idea is that we create superposition, we evaluate a function over all possible states, and then we create constructive or destructive interference between different terms to produce an answer. And the fact that this is happening to several states simultaneously is what allows quantum computers to have speed ups over classical computers for certain types of problems. So this expression we have here above is the first important step, which is applying the Halimar transform to all, the all zero state, which gives us an equal superposition of all basis states. But we also need to find out how the Halimar transform acts on an arbitrary state X, because after this function evaluation, we can have any state. So it is helpful to come up with an expression of what we get at the output of a Halimar transform, let's call it Y, for some arbitrary input. So the first step in this process is to remember that any state can be expressed as a sum over all basis states, let's call it J, from J going from zero to capital M minus one, pre-multiplied by some probability amplitude alpha sub J. So what we're trying to find out is if we apply this quantum Halimar transform to state X, what will be the resulting state now, the good thing is that by linearity, we can find out what this expression is by applying the quantum Halimar transform to each individual basis state in our system. And this is easy enough to do because we can, for example, take again our quantum Halimar matrix and say, well, if I apply the quantum Halimar transform to let's say state zero, which in this case, the zero is an integer number. What we mean here is the all zero state. Well, we know that that state is a column vector with a one in the, in the zeroth row and then zeros everywhere else. Well, what this is going to result in is in extracting the first column of our matrix, which we can write in a different way as one over root n of the sum now from i, which is the rows of this column going from zero to capital N minus one of h sub i zero times each individual basis state. Now, if we were to replace this with state one, well, that would be the column vector with a one on the one entry, which means we will now extract the second column of our Halamar matrix, which will make the sum the same, but then here for the coefficients h sub i one, so as you can see, in general, if we replace this with J, that is going to extract the Jth column of this matrix, which we can represent in this following form. So then now we can replace this expression here, which would give us that the quantum Halimar transform of a state X is the sum from J going from zero to N minus one alpha sub J of what we found here above. So what we have here is some superposition over all basis states now indexed by i. So we can reorganize this a bit and you know, we can call this state y given by the sum from i from zero to n minus one of one over root n of the sum from j equal to zero to n minus one of this coefficients minus one to the i dot product with j alpha sub j for every basis state i. And we can call these coefficients, let's say beta sub j, and say that state y is the sum from i equal to zero to n minus one of beta sub j, sorry, beta sub i state i. Where of course, beta sub i is given by this whole expression here. So what this means is that given some state x, which is a superposition over all basis states with some coefficients alpha sub j, Applying the quantum Halimar transform gives us a state Y, which is also a superposition over all basis states, but with now coefficients beta sub I given by this expression. 
So let's now take a look at an example using Qiskit. So let's say we want to compute the Hadamard transform for some interesting state. Let's say we want to do it for the GHC state that we saw in the previous video. So we know that we can generate that state using the following circuit. And if we generate the state vector for that, we know we get an equal superposition of 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. Now let's say we want to apply the Hallamar transform to the state. So we add Hallamar gates to each of the qubits. Now, if we regenerate the output state, what we will see is that we get an interesting state where the parity of the bits that compose each of the states is even. So here we have a total of zero ones, which is an even number. And here we get two ones, two ones, and two ones, which are all also even. And the reason we get such state is because if we look at the matrix, for the quantum Hadamard transform, what we see is that what we're passing here is a superposition of the all zeros state and the all ones state, which it's such that when we take this coefficients and add them with this coefficients, we always get even parity. Now, if we were to subtract the all zero state with the all one state, we should get odd parity. So we can also look at that. So instead of generating this GHC state with a plus here, we can try to generate it with a minus sign. So for that, all we need to do is add a Z gate to any of our qubits. So let's do it for, let's say qubit two. And that gives us zero, zero, zero minus one, one, one. And then let's apply Hallamar gates to each qubit. And now if we see the resulting superposition state, we got a state where all of these components have odd parity. So here we have only one one in the first three states and then three ones in the last state. So the quantum Hadamard transform to which we fed this state perform an interference in such a way that it took the coefficients of the zero state and subtracted them from the coefficients of the all one state, leaving only the ones with odd parity. So that's all for this video. But of course, we'll learn more about the importance of the quantum Hadamard transform as we start exploring different quantum algorithms.